second. Good morning, church. In Colossians, it says, be thankful and let the word of God dwell in you richly. So we have gathered together to worship online and in-house, and our kids, who are amazing and awesome, are going to make the word of God come alive today as they lead us in worship. So we're so grateful for you guys being here, and we want to say thank you to uh, Shirley Barnett, our children's coordinator, who has worked so hard on this, as well as Julie Ferguson and Connie Urey and Carol Baird. Thank you all for making this possible with our kids. We're excited to see this today. <clears throat> we have a couple of joys to share. The United Methodist Women did a festival, a fall festival called Homemade for You, and they were able to raise around $1,500. So yay for the Methodist Women. And our Thanksgiving meal for Chow, that's our dinner on Wednesday, our community dinner on Wednesdays this past it's scrumptious. Raise your hand if you got some. Woohoo! Woo and we served 711 people. 711 people. That's amazing. <clears throat> You'll notice we have some flowers up on the chancel today. This rose right here is for newborn Chloe May, the granddaughter of Shirley and Dave Barnett. So we welcome Chloe. And the white flowers behind me are from the Celebration of Life service for Dr. Betty Bush that happened yesterday. So there are many things to be thankful for in the season of thanks. Today is um, Children's Sabbath, as I said, and it is also the first day to begin our readings for our Advent devotion, I Am Mary. So you can get these on Facebook. Shirley has posted each day's um, reading and the questions that go with it. And if you've got a book, your sheet inside should tell you what to read each day. Next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, Pastor Kim will be preaching on Annunciation thunderstruck. You want, you want to be here for that. <clears throat> also, um, about our Christmas Eve um, schedule, on Christmas Eve we will have one all-church Christmas Eve service at 7 p.m. So 7 p.m. is Christmas Eve worship. The very next day is Sunday, Christmas Day. So we want to make it easy and casual. You can just stay in your Christmas jammies or your plaid jammies or Whatever you want to, we're going to have Coco and hymn singing and um, just celebrate again that the Holy Child has come to us. It's that time of year to make cookies for the Maryville Treatment Center. Um, that includes um, people who are incarcerated primarily for addiction and um, substance abuse problems in their lives. And this is the one time of year that we are allowed to send food into them. And people on staff have told us that the people there look forward to it all year long. If you can make a couple of dozen cookies, December the 15th is when we need them, and you can write that down on your tear-off sheet that's on your bulletin and stick it in our um, wooden offering boxes a little bit later. There's also a place if you want to put prayer concerns so that we can lift you in prayer. All right. Thank you so much for being here to lift up the name of Jesus, and I ask our acolytes to bring forward the light of Christ, reminding us it is always within us and among us. All righty, for this first song, we need some shakers. It's a mover, so come on up. All righty, and we are going to sing Jesus is the Rock. There you go. Jesus is the Rock, and he rolls my blues away. Woo! Jesus is the rock and he rolls my blues away. Bop, she bop, she bop. Woo! Jesus is the rock and he rolls my blues away. He wakes in the morning and he's flying by Thank you. 
for the noisy bucket offering. Kids, can you grab? The proceeds for today can go to Wesley Center. Thank you, church, for um, supporting the Wesley Student Center, the Methodist organization on campus. We, um, Wendy just announced that the Chow team served 700 and was it 11 meals um, last week at on Wednesday. Well, they add to that 20 more meals that they delivered to the Wesley Student Center for their Thursday night dinner. So Chow per prepared 731 was it good Josh did they come and eat the eat dinner on Thursday awesome so we thank the chow team for that we thank each of you for your support of Wesley so Wesley actually has had two Thanksgiving dinners Thursday night they had Thanksgiving from chow and then the Sunday last Sunday we had our annual Thanksgiving dinner as well Thank you, angels and shepherds and sheep, for collecting our noisy bucket offering, and thank you all for donating to that. We have been working at Wesley to update the building over the last few months, and I thank you for anyone who has um, helped out in that way at all. The Wesley board has decided that the next step is to relieve Pastor Kim of some of her <laughs> extra duties that she's been putting in at Wesley, and, and it's time for us to hire a director. So. Um, as you are stepping up for um, FUMC, you got the, note, the cards to step up your donations to FUMC. We also ask you to prayerfully consider a monthly contribution to Wesley as well. We have some people who do that by sending in a check every month. You can automate a check being sent to Wesley. We have some people who just write out a check and put it in the mail every month. And also, the way Tim and I do it is that we have our, our um, bank send a check each month it's just automated comes out we don't even think about it or notice it yeah <laughs> fyi so thank you so much for the ways that this church supports the college-aged ministry on campus and for all that have had their hand in it and um, thank you for this noisy bucket offering Thank you, Jenny. We have, a, we have a lot to celebrate as a congregation. Our college kids, our kids, our bell choir, our music ministry. So many good things happening here. It is, it's a joy. It's a joy. Um, following our pastoral prayer, you are welcome to stay where you are for some time of reflection or to move about the sanctuary. You can put a prayer request or an offering in our boxes kneel here and pray or light a candle. It's your time to be open to what the Spirit of God might bring to you or what the Spirit of God might evoke or ask for from you. So would you bow your hearts in prayer with me? Holy One, good morning. We tip our faces heavenward here in your sanctuary, a safe space to come and be and rest and praise and to be filled. We declare that your love endures forever, and that brings a hallelujah to our hearts and to our lips. Giver of every breath we breathe, you sustain us. Sustain our bodies, sustain our spirits. Your word says that our bodies are temples of your Holy Spirit, and that we embody you on this earth. Thank you for such an honor teach us to love and care for our bodies well. God, in this time of bounty, we pause in moments of quiet to give thanks. Lord, we give you thanks for basics of life that brothers and sisters around the globe don't all enjoy. Thank you for running water and food on the table, for shelter over our heads and warm coats to protect us from the winter. Thank you for work that provides the needs for our families. And thank you for family and friends who are by our side, both emotionally and physically. Oh God, you indeed are good, and we lift up our thanks. We confess, oh God, that as humans it's easy to be dissatisfied, yet the way of Jesus is one of humility and gratitude. 
So help turn the eyes of our hearts away from what is wrong or missing in our lives and toward what is right and good that we might savor it and give thanks for it. We take just a moment to do that now, Lord, in the quiet of our hearts, what bubbles to the top may we savor and give thanks for. In this hour of worship and when we go from here, show us the steps to follow that we might look and live a little bit more like Jesus Christ, our Savior. For it's our desire to love others well. It's in his name we pray, and it's for his glory that we live. Amen. Good morning, church. God is good. And all the time. So this Sunday is a special one. It's the last Sunday on the church calendar. Next week we begin a new church year with something that's called Advent, right? We've heard about Advent where we have the reef with the candles on it and families come up and they read and they light the candles and we reflect on the themes that are throughout Advent of hope, love, joy, and peace. And so today is that reflection in our hearts. It's also Christ the King Sunday. Well, we end, we end the calendar year with this powerful reflection on who 
Christ is, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Now, in some countries, they call it Stir Up Sunday. And the reason they do that, it originated in countries, has something to do with Christmas pudding. We sing the song, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and we ask for the figgy pudding. And so if anyone has a recipe for figgy pudding, I would love to have it. But as I was reading about this, this Stir Up Sunday, um, and figgy pudding, it's, a, it's kind of a plum or a dried fruit uh, conglomeration that it was put together to preserve foods. But out of it comes a soup-like dish that was served uh, for fasting, a fasting meal in preparation for the Christmas season. And so we need to think of figgy pudding, and we need to think of stir up Sunday. In some countries, they're yelling today throughout the congregation, stir it up, stir it up, as we prepare our hearts. Well, today we're going to do that a little bit different because a couple of months ago we were thinking about children's Sabbath and in a staff meeting it kind of came up, why don't we have the children do a play, but why don't we have them do it in November at the end of the calendar year that ushers in our desire to be awaiting the Christ child to be born in us anew. So here we are today, Christ the King Sunday, stir it up, and the introduction of our children helping, making, living the scripture, making it come alive for us. So now we prevent, prevent, now we present to you the gift of our children and the scripture from Luke. Elizabeth was Mary's older cousin who lived in another town. She had been married to a good man named Zachariah for many, 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 many years. Strange, she doesn't look that old. Wait, this is just one of our youth. <clears throat> the angel Gabriel had visited Elizabeth's husband, Zachariah, when he had come to offer the sacrifice at the temple. The angel said to Zechariah, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Actually, angels are quite imposing figures. You can look it up in various passages in the Bible where angelic appearances are recorded. Almost all of them reflect how frightened the person seeing them became. Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. And he will help to make the people ready and prepared for the Lord. How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is too old. Oh! Not only did he call his wife old, he did something worse than that. He questioned an angel. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the proper time. A long time ago, a young woman named Mary lived in a village called Nazareth. One day, an angel appeared to her. are blessed by God and will give birth to a son and name him Jesus. I will happily serve the Lord and his will be done. Mary, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. How will this be? Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. How will this be? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. What did all that mean? The angel told Mary that she is going to have a baby who will be the Son of God. What did Mary say? She said yes. Now after the angel left her, Mary hurried to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth! Mary! When Mary arrived, she found out that things were just like the angel had told her. 
Mary seems to really happy to see Elizabeth and just think. Elizabeth was going to have a baby in her old age. It was a miracle. Yes, and Mary, and Mary wasn't the only one who was happy. Elizabeth was happy too. Listen to what she said to Mary. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now Joseph wasn't sure what to do when he heard that Mary was going to have a baby. So one night, when he was asleep, the angel came to talk to Joseph, too. Joseph, Mary is going to have a baby from God. It's okay for you to marry her and take care of her and the baby. You will name the baby Jesus. Oh, okay. Mary married Joseph, who was a carpenter. sent out a decree to everyone in Israel that said that everyone had to go to their own hometown of their ancestors so that they could be counted and taxed. Joseph, Mary's husband, was a descendant of David, King David. And King David was from Bethlehem, so Joseph had to go all the way to Bethlehem from Nazareth. So Mary and Joseph went to Joseph's hometown of Bethlehem to pay their taxes. Mary went with him on the long, hard journey, even though it was almost time for her to give birth to her baby. There were lots of other people there, too. Excuse me, sir. Name? I'm Joseph, and this is Mary. We need a place to stay for the night, please. Sorry, but there's no room in the inn. Oh, but sir, please, we have walked over 70 miles to get here, and Mary's very tired. Sorry, sorry, I can't help you. The place is packed. Well, with all the visitors from out of town. There is no place to put you in the missus. Please, sir, please. You see, we're going to have a baby and we think it may even be tonight. We need shelter somewhere, anywhere. 
I see your problem. We're, we all have problems, don't we? I'll tell you what I'll do. Since it's obvious you need a place here, there's a stable out back. Now, it's not much, but it's shelter from the wind and n the night air. You can have some privacy, and I'll throw some nice, clean hay for you. What do you say? We'll take it, and thank you. You have been most kind. God bless you. Did you hear that? God bless you, he says. Well, little did they know. God was going to bless everyone on that night, on that special night in Bethlehem. call them, although the Bible does not, it calls them wise men, and there is no clear indication that there were three of them. There may have been more, or less for that matter, but there were clearly three gifts, and so the tradition has indicated that there were three kings or wise men, and although they may have traveled alone, it is quite likely that there were others in their entourage. No, nevertheless, they arrived in Jerusalem seeking the one who was born king of the Jews. You see, they'd heard the prophecy and knew that this special king was to be born. So they came to Israel to find him. The kings applied in Jerusalem first, knowing that the learned men of the Jews resided there. They believed that was the most likely place for their king to be born. It would be in their capital city. However, when they ask at the city gate, where is he who was born the king of the Jews? The Roman ruler, a despicable man named Herod, was quite upset. Where is he who is born king of the Jews? Where is this king of the Jews to be born? The baby is to be born in Bethlehem, the home of their beloved King David, as prophesied from the ancestral line of David. Go to Bethlehem. Go and find him, and let me know where he is so that I can worship him, too. Herod is lying to us. He told us he'd like to come worship the newborn king as well. He asked us to come back when we found the child. Terrible man. Herod has no intention of worshiping the child. He was jealous, and he did not want him to live long enough to be king. Yes, that's what we found out later. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We went to Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread. Did you know that? Uh, yes. Thank you. I did. At any rate, we are traveling on the Bethlehem. The shepherds, they were out in their field watching over their flocks. And all of a sudden... Great joy, good news of great joy that will be for all the people. An angel, an angel from God appeared to us. And we were terrified, but the angel said, Don't be afraid.
The wise men and the shepherds traveled from afar. It took a long time. Such patience. We too find patience in the waiting as we prepare our hearts in Advent for the coming of great hope, love, joy, and peace. Thank you for attending our play. The praise band will sing House of the Lord. Actually, we're going to help lead it because we need you to sing it. So please stand as we sing House of the Lord. And those, well, just a second. We got our shaky kids. They're coming back. Anybody did not get a chance to shake, by golly, then you come up here and grab it now. Okay, but yeah. We got lots of them. Come on up. All righty.
benediction today is to uh, have joy in the house of the Lord, knowing that we are the temple of God, and that joy comes with us, goes with us, and we follow it, and it's beside us. So as you leave this place today, have the joy of these young kids who just brought the scripture of Luke alive in our hearts. Happy Thanksgiving. May the peace of God flow with you in all the ways that it may flow, and may you share that love mercy and grace that Jesus showed us, always and forever. Amen and amen. I invite the acolytes to come forward as we can follow the light of Christ out.